Hi, I'm Brian Stewart. I'm an intellectual property attorney at Morris Bain Martin. This is another installment of MMM Tech Law. I'm here with Emily Morris, founder and CEO of Emergy Hydro. Emergy is a innovative disruptor in the distributed renewable energy space focusing on hydropower. Emily, thanks for joining us. Thanks so much for having me, Brian. So Emily, tell us a little bit about the company. Give us the elevator pitch. Sure. So Emergy is redefining hydroelectric power, not to be characterized by the big, massive uh, hydroelectric dams that you might think of when you think of hydropower, but by the modularity and flexibility and compact size that has enabled solar power and wind power to grow exponentially over the past few decades. Hydroelectric power is plays a critical role in our energy infrastructure because water is more available and more controllable than either the sun or the wind. But our energy portfolio, especially as more and more cities and more and more corporations sign on to these climate action goals and carbon three goals are implementing distributed renewables. Water power is no longer being represented in that mix. Uh, It's almost entirely wind and solar and the advent of chemical batteries uh, to provide that energy either at night or when the wind doesn't blow. And so Emergy provides a sustainable way through the use of our modular hydropower turbines to capture and harness the power of water in water infrastructure to contribute to that energy mix. So we have installed a pilot even here close to home in Atlanta with the City of Atlanta's Department of Watershed Management in a wastewater treatment facility using that effluent to power a turbine, as well as we've installed an array of these systems with the City of Denver in a raw water canal. And so as energy grows, Our goal is to install these arrays of hydropower turbines the same way that you might see an array of solar panels or an array of wind turbines and use that continuous water flow to provide very reliable and very cost-effective electricity that is also carbon-free. Very, very interesting. Emily, what would you say differentiates you from your competitors if you even have any kind of direct competitors out there? I have to say there aren't a ton of people innovating in the hydro space as much as you see, you know, these major industry developments in the solar or other renewable space. Hydro, for whatever reason, isn't the sexy technology, I guess. However, that's not to say that we don't have competitors either in the hydro space or in the broader distributed renewable space. I will say that typically when I go in to speak with a a new potential customer, they don't typically say to me, oh, shucks, I just you know, purchased from another small hydro company. They'll often say, you know, we're really heavily considering solar or wind power, to which we explain the value proposition of energy to be able to achieve the same amount of power as the other alternatives. However, the energy that's generated over the course of a day can be up to 24 hours, not simply the hours of the day when the sun shines. And so the value proposition to customers who own water infrastructure, whether that's an agricultural company or a municipality, uh, is one that they tend to understand quite clearly because they see the water and the availability of it all the time. So, you know, really often we're comparing the differences between types of power generation, solar versus energy or or wind versus energy. Although there are other companies that are innovating in small hydro. Often, however, what you see is that those companies try to take the technology that is present at a very big dam and try to shrink it down to something that's very small. And there are inherent challenges with that. Some costs don't scale linearly like that. And uh, especially permitting costs or other soft costs for construction or things like that. And so with Emergy, what we've done is we've eliminated all civil construction. We've essentially developed a turbine that is the size of an SUV, and it fits on the back of a truck. It's completely self-sustaining, self-ballasting. We drive it out to a site. We simply place it into the floor of a channel, and it's held there by its own gravity. So it's a very simple, easy-to-install solution, easy-to-remove solution. Um, It can even be moved to different places if you so choose. And um, what that allows us to do 
is not have to have the construction timelines, the groundbreakings that essentially all other hydro systems that we know of require. And we've spent great care working together with you, Brian, on protecting that competitive aspect of our product in being able to preserve those fast deployment timelines and the speed at which we can bring these projects online because that's one of the ways where we have to compete with proven solar and other technologies who can be built and constructed very quickly, whereas traditional hydro as well as competitive hydro concepts can't do that. It's obviously a very interesting business model. And you kind of said there aren't a lot of small hydro companies out there. You know, what are some of the challenges, uh, maybe advantages of of trying to start a small hydro company like yours? Maybe you could just speak to that for a minute. Yeah, I mean... I will say that from a challenges perspective, there is value in industry, right? So there is the diversity of a larger industry and everyone working on complementary problems in the industry spawns greater innovation, spawns lower cost, you know, really across the board. And that's one of the things we've been able to see over the last couple of decades in the solar power field is that there are so many companies working at different sections of the value chain that overall costs are coming down. We don't have that in small hydro. And so we're in some respects being asked by customers, by partners, by others to fulfill the whole value chain from supplying the turbines to interconnection to the grid, to servicing, to, you know, all of these things because there isn't a truly developed industry for that. Um, So that's one challenge that we have. Although, you know, of course, there are many advantages as well to being in such a unique space and to being to providing a solution that not just our customers but other onlookers can really resonate with without a, a large amount of education. You know, these systems look like a wind turbine and people tend to understand, you know, how wind turbines operate going from mechanical energy of a rotating machine to electrical energy. And, you know, in the water space, that's been done for centuries, right? Um, And really catalyzed the industrial revolution there. And so that's a concept that people can relate to, they can resonate with. And when they see the opportunity to generate renewable power, which is not just a noble goal, but often a regulatory requirement in many places, and being able to do it with a machine that can operate 24 hours a day and thus you know, they can sell power 24 hours a day. Um, It really contributes right to the bottom line. And so there are some advantages as well that we're not out there, you know, selling a a mysterious black box or something like that. Hydropower is something that uh, people understand, people know, and they can get up to speed and move forward on relatively quickly. Sounds like you've had to, you know, kind of think through a lot of different issues that, you know, perhaps other startups haven't had to deal with from kind of the vertical integration and handling like all of those different pieces. Very, very interesting. And you know, congrats to you and your team on, on all the work that you've done. How has coronavirus kind of affected the business and maybe affected you know, some of that work that you've done? Absolutely. So coronavirus definitely was not something that I think any of us could have predicted. The good news for Emergy as a business is that Clean energy is just as important now as it has been growing in recent years. The growth in renewable energy is expected to continue. Even, you know, a a bigger emphasis on infrastructure is also expected sort of coming out of this initial wave of COVID as well. Um, Our customers being water asset or water infrastructure owners are stable customers Drinking water is still available. There's still water being treated. There's still farming happening. And so our customers are still doing business as usual. We have been able to be successful. We've signed a couple of large MOUs during this this period of lockdown. We also have done some customer deliveries via FaceTime, which is quite an interesting activity that personally I had not had experience with before. And so the good news is that the negative effects of COVID on our business are really temporary, we believe. You know, while that is the case, the temporary impacts are uh, in some ways inconveniences and in some ways quite consequential to to our deliveries right now. As I mentioned, you know, in-person installations are very difficult, if not have been impossible throughout the American West. 
In addition, we've had supply chain disruptions with hardware manufacturing companies, many of these machine shops and other fabricators that are really built up to support industry, including oil and gas and including you know, other power sectors are struggling right now. And we've had actually had to change suppliers mid-delivery based on major economic challenges. And so it's something that we're, we're very acutely aware of. It's hit home for us in, in our delivery costs and our delivery timelines. Fortunately, our customers well understand that this is clearly something out of, out of all of our control, but we hope that these impacts are temporary and we, we certainly hope that, that we don't continue to see economic impacts you know, upstream in our, our supply chain as well. Yeah, I think it's, you know, it has affected lots of people. Emily, I think you were recently featured in a publication. Is that right? What was that? Are you talking about the Municipal Water Leader magazine, maybe? Yeah, so Municipal Water Leader magazine is a is a publication that is distributed to all of the water authorities, you know, on behalf of the the local governments around the country. And they did a an exciting feature on Emergy and our work with the city of Denver and having deployed the first distributed hydropower array in the United States in Denver. Um, that was a very exciting opportunity for us and also enabled us to leverage that experience and that showcase to bring on strategic partners in the West and actually globally now through GE Renewable Energy as well. And so that feature was, a am not used to being featured on, on a magazine like that, but it was pretty fun to see. And I'm obviously very glad to see that Emergy is getting recognition among our customer base uh, for the work that we're doing. Well, it sounds like you know very exciting time for the company. Congrats to you and all of your successes. We're very proud to be working with you. And thanks again for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much for having me. Very happy to be working with you as well.